you have to be concerned if you're going to accidentally water any uh, public access, like roads. Nothing worse than having somebody's car get splattered with a slurry shooter off of a big gun, you know. That would really be nasty. So that's certainly a consideration. Uh, we have to know the subsurface geology a little bit. You know, what's going to happen if we get water down in, are, are we going to possibly contaminate an aquifer underground? What's happening down below our soil level 5, 6, 8, 10, 12 feet? You'd have to have geological samples throughout the area to know, you know, where is the, in our case, where's the basalt layer start? You know, just how deep does the soil go before we hit rock? That's probably our first concern. And then just what is the profile like? You know, do we have, on top we might have a silt loam, but what happens to it one foot down, two foot down, three foot down, and so on? We want to know what that soil profile looks like so that we're not going to be going down four feet, hitting a rock layer, and having that stuff go into a very shallow aquifer and end up down in the neighbor's well somewhere. That's what when you were so about. It's better to have sandy soil. Yeah, sometimes it can be a little scary because it'll go through it too easy. And, and also if you have clay, won't it tend to, the biological chemicals, the action within the soil break, be able to break that down more? So. With a, actually, the, you will get the right bacteria mix in the soil. In fact, you can even build the culture. You can add the bacteria into the the water to create the culture you want, and but but clays will hold it, you know. Right, as soon as that bacteria gets in the ground, those clays they want to attach to it and hold on to it and stuff. But again, the clays are not good because they're so tight; it's hard to get water down through it. So, you know, an ideal soil is probably a little a nice blend, which is always the case. You always kind of like a nice blend. So this other bacteria will neutralize the base type? Sure. That's basically what happens on any, bac any bad bacteria in this world get eaten by good bacteria. You know, even in your body, you get bacterial infections. The good bacteria is what will get them, generally. If it doesn't, then you have to take thing like uh, penicillin, which kills all the bacteria, and then kills all the bugs in your body effectively, then you got to start all over. You got to regrow all those bugs. Then you, but you killed all the good ones along with the bad ones with that penicillin. And so then you hope you get an injection, uh, you know, as you consume the things you normally eat, the, the good bacteria comes back in your body. Uh, also, what kind of crops can we grow in this particular farm? You know, is it something that we can harvest or is it the water of sorts that all we're going to do is just water a cover and uh, let evapotranspiration just consume it and we just purge it? Now, there are places where the water quality is so bad that they do not harvest the crops. They simply grow pasture, but they never graze it. Or they'll grow a grass field and they'll never graze it. They might go in and cut it take it off the field and burn it. That does happen. That, that, if, the qual if there are pollutants in that crop, you cannot feed it out. You know, normally, they, most cases, they're growing forage crops to feed cattle. That's normally what ends up being occurred with liquid waste is growing forages because forages do a good job of processing and and it goes through a secondary source before humans consume it. You know, it has to go through a, a cow or a steer or a bull before it gets consumed. So uh, the bacteria becomes a non-entity in that process. The, the problem is any of those heavy metals or carcinogens that might pass through with them. And you have to be concerned about the legal ramifications, you know, the zoning codes within a county or a city, what kind of court battle you might end up with if somebody complains. You know, they're having that battle in the Yakima Valley now. They put in a lot of those big dairies and now people are starting to complain about the smell of the dairy. 
they love the idea that you got all this economy into the area, but you know dairies can have some days they smell pretty bad. And uh, people get a hit of that, you know, a couple of times and they don't like it. And so you get an awful lot of interesting potential ramifications.